Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, there was a uh, late switch of uh, sessions and rooms, so I want to make sure you're in the right place. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, an intro level um, discussion on a designer-friendly theme system in Drupal 8 for the front end track. Uh, if you're here for the core conversation about actually a similar topic, just going more in depth on this, uh, then that's not what this is today, but that is what's happening tomorrow um, at 345 in the Barcelona room. We wanted to get this one happening first so that people who are excited about what they hear here um, can then go into the more in-depth one tomorrow. So. That's fine. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will assume that you know all this stuff tomorrow, so. Which makes me that much more an asshole. Okay. Cool. And, uh, Okay, and for those of you who are staying, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I hope this is uh, both interesting and I'm especially, you know, uh, one of the things we're really hoping to get out of this is for anyone who uh, hasn't been involved in the core issue queue or other kind of uh, places that has been having discussions on Twig to get up to speed about what, what Twig is and, and why we think uh, using it uh, can solve some really uh, great you know, some, some sort of important problems. Uh, and most importantly, we need your feedback. You know, we need to know whether we're on the right track, whether this will actually make things better for designers and front-end developers, uh, or whether we need to switch gears and do something completely different. So, so I'm gonna try to spend uh, maybe, you know, 20, 30 minutes on the intro and then turn this into a, uh, leave lots of time for Q&A uh, and, and for you to give us feedback. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to remember, uh, you know, you go to a session, maybe it's fun, uh, maybe not, but then, you know, it's like, what did you get out of it? So if you can only remember one thing uh, from this session, just remember the word consistency, and that's it. <laughs> uh, if, you're, uh, if you're ambitious, oh, sorry. if you're ambitious and you think, you know, you might come away remembering two things from this talk, then consistency and simplicity. Okay, uh, but first, uh, I guess we'll introduce ourselves. Um, so my name is Alex Bronstein. Uh, I work for Acquia. I am FLGencia on Drupal.org, and I'm one of the theme system co-maintainers. Um, uh, my name is Jen Lampton. I am independent, and I really care about people's ability to learn Drupal and to work with the theme layer. And I'm uh, John Alban Wilkins. Uh, I work for Palantir.net, and I'm also one of the theme system maintainers. Uh, and I'm curious, actually, for who's in the room. Uh, uh, who in the room uh, considers themselves either a designer or a front-end developer? Okay, looks like a little more than half or two-thirds. Great. And uh, who uh, was building themes uh, in Drupal 6? Okay, most of you. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess uh, of the people who have experience in Drupal 6, was the, uh, raise your hand if the, if the switch from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 was painful, if working with templates and theme functions in Drupal 7 was more painful than in Drupal 6? Wow, almost no one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just a tech check here. I need to make this smaller. Now, this is really low res. <laughs> okay. And how does that, is that wide enough in the, is that font size big enough for the back? Yep. Okay. okay let me see if I, uh, yeah. Let me actually, uh, see if I can go one smaller and if that still works. 
Is that still is that still readable? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So this is uh, so. It was interesting that a lot of you did not find the transition from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 painful. Um, so for those of you who did, uh, or just to look at you know, why some people might have found it painful, uh, this is what things looked like in Drupal 6. This is the node.tpl file, uh, the node.tpl.php file from Drupal 6. Uh, and if you look at it, you basically see you, know, you don't have that, many, uh, that much PHP code. You, know, you have a whole bunch of print statements. Uh, and mostly what you're printing are variables. So you can print uh, dollar picture. For example, uh, you can print dollar title. You can print dollar content. Uh, you can print dollar links. Uh, and you know, even though those are kind of fairly different kinds of objects, they're actually all strings by the time it gets into here. Uh, and so, a lot of people found this fairly easy. Uh, the one thing that sometimes occurs here, however, is you know, you'll notice you'll print something that is uh, the property of an object. And so, if you look up to the documentation and see, you know, what what does that mean? What is the dollar node object? Uh, it says, okay, it's the full node object. Oh, contains data that might not be safe. Um, that's kind of scary, I would think, if you're just starting to theme uh, the node template. You know, is is NID safe? Uh, what else could I be printing out here that's not safe? Uh, and if you get it wrong, uh, you know, you might actually introduce a security bug on your website. Uh, but at least we're only doing this in one place, and the rest of the variables actually are safe. Okay, so in Drupal 7, what changed? Uh, so one of the things that changed is we actually introduced uh, an attributes uh, variable. Uh, and the attributes variable uh, contains all of the attributes other than ID and class. Uh, and we did this in, m primarily for RDFA, uh, but other modules can use it for, uh, for all sorts of other attributes. Uh, we've also introduced this idea of render. Uh, so now uh, you don't just print a title, but you also uh, render a title prefix and render a title suffix. Uh, and this is done for contextual links and modules like that. Um, you, uh, in, you, know, you no longer print dollar content, but you uh, hide content comments and content links. And then you can render content. And then after you've done that, you can render the things that you hid. Uh, so some variables we can uh, we have to render, like content is something that we have to render, but title is something that we can print. And I think this at least has the potential to be confusing for quite a lot of people and makes it harder to bring sort of new designers and new front end developers into Drupal. Or if we do bring them in, then they just sort of spend a lot of time cursing this kind of inconsistency instead of just making their markup look like what they want it to look like. So why did we do this? Why, you know, why did we you know, create this mess? And uh, the reason is because back in 2009, uh, we were identifying all sorts of limitations that, of uh, things we couldn't do in Drupal 6. So uh, for example, like this ability to, uh, one of the things you can do here is, you know, here we hid links and rendered the links separately, but you can actually go further. Uh, the links include li you know, links from other modules. So for example, you can have the comment module enabled, in which case after the node, you get like a link, you know, add new comment. If you have the blog module enabled, you get links for like you know view this person's blog. Uh, if you have the forum module enabled, you know you get other links, and maybe you want to take some of those links and render them separately from other links. Couldn't do that in Drupal six, at least not easily. Whereas in Drupal seven, it's actually very easy. Uh, you could you know you could actually say you know instead of print render content links, you can say something like print render content links blog, and then in a separate line print render content links you know, the rest of them. And suddenly your blog links can be in a separate UL from all your other links. And then you can, you know, float one to the left and float the other to the right. Uh, and that's not just for links, but that same is true for fields. So for example, if you have a whole bunch of fields in your node and you want to print a couple of them separately and then print the rest, same kind of concept. Uh, you, you just say print content, you know, the field you want, uh, and then the rest of the content. So, you know, the render system adds a lot of power. Um, even though it does create this uh, difficulty and consistency. So for Drupal 8, one of, the one of the major changes that actually went in about a week or two ago is uh, if you look at the Drupal 7 template file, um, you'll notice that we have a variable called classes and a separate variable called attributes. 
Uh, and so, and that makes sense, right? Because it's very common in a template to want to add more classes. Like, you know, in addition to the classes that Drupal provides you, this particular template maybe wants to add clear fix. Maybe, you know, you have a bunch of other ones that you want to add. Uh, but then the question comes up, you know, why is class special in that regard? What if I wanted to do the same thing for the data attribute or, you know, any number of other HTML attributes? So in Drupal 8, you now just get a single variable attributes uh, and if you want to treat the class specially, you can print it specially. And, uh, and then if you do that, then when you print attributes, it prints all the rest. Okay? So if you wanted to do the same thing for data, you could do that. You could have another line that says data equals PHP print attributes data, you know, add your own other stuff, and then print the rest of the attributes. Or if you didn't do anything special with class, then you wouldn't even need this line at all. You could just say print attributes and your template file is shorter. And I'd like to point out that you don't have to do show and hide for this. It's just done sort of transparently in the background. Yes. And, and it's shooting in the foot. Like if you just want to look into attributes with some extraction function and then uh, it's gone because it's reset. That's set automatically. I guess it's some magic method thing. Or what that is. It, it's only reset when it's printed. How does it know? Uh, it, well, it's, yeah, it's reset when it's evaluated as a string. So uh, when the magic two-string method is called, so. Yep. But potentially. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. There's no. There's no hide uh, for for this. Uh, there's, you know, there's things you can do given that it's PHP. You could sort of create a local variable and stuff. So this is this is a step in the direction. Um, as these questions point out, it's not complete. Wouldn't it be an idea to make this enter attributes thing an object, and you can say add class, remove class, and, and then whatever to make it to string, and then you don't have to set this up. You just say build up your attributes object, and then you print it. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what that's, and that's what this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. And you actually can access this as an object. But one of the things is, you know, we. I don't know if we, you know. Do we want uh, yeah. templates? You know, having all sorts of functionality around how to deal with objects. You know, that's one of the things that we're thinking. Maybe you know, at the template level, it would be easier to just be able to print variables. Um, I'll go on to show what this might look like in Twig, because uh, I think that actually adds some improvement on top of this uh, sort of direction. Uh, obviously, one thing you'll notice, we changed div to, uh, oh no, that was already done, never mind. Um, so here, you know, Twig, uh, instead of opening up PHP tags, basically the two major syntaxes in Twig is when you want to print, uh, you put something into a double, a double curly brace, that means print, and when you have a control structure, like an if statement, uh, it's a, you know, brace percent. Uh, so that actually is nice in that it makes the syntax, you know, kind of short, and it sort of means, you know, less, uh, a, a larger percentage of what's in your template file is markup, and a smaller percentage is sort of, you know, code. And, and I think that has one small benefit. Uh, but the other benefit it has is all uh, traversal, you know, whether you're going down into an object or going down into an array, uh, can be done with a, a dot separator. So, you know, you don't have to worry about like, okay, is this an array that I have to use brackets for, or is this, you know, an object that I have to use an arrow for? At the template level, you know, you just want to drill down into a variable, so uh, you use the dot. And you'll notice uh, there's, no, there's no more render uh, uh, function. Uh, you can just print a top level variable. This is our, you know, this is our goal. This isn't all working yet. This is kind of what we're working towards with Twig, but the idea is we would like to move in a direction where templates look more like this. Uh, so for example, here you can print title, and uh, if you didn't need to do anything fancy with content, you could just print content, you know, or like, you know, instead of having to render title prefix and render title suffix, you can just treat it the same way as uh, the bottom most variable. Oh, thank you. Uh, Twig is <laughs> uh, Twig is a templating engine that is used by uh, the Symphony project, uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, so it's a separate project, um, but it's but it, but Symphony uses it. And uh, one of the reasons we're looking at it is it has a lot of nice features, and one of the features that it has is that it compiles to a PHP class. So. 
Uh, it has, you know, I think it has a good syntax and it has some good functionality, but in addition to all of the good functionality that it has, uh, anything, you know, a twig file at, you know, at uh, the first time you run it will get compiled into a PHP class, which means using it is actually really, potentially really fast. Uh, and uh, a lot of the issues around, you know, using templating engines that aren't PHP template is performance concerns. And there are, there's definitely some things that need to be looked at performance-wise, but, but because it's compiled, it, uh, it actually gives us the opportunity to, to tweak performance to the extent that we need to. Yeah. I'd just like to, um, Jen actually organized a summit in March where we got together and um, discussed the, the goal was to discuss the problems that we saw inherent in the D7 theme system. Um, Twig was one potential solution. Um, I wasn't really necessarily sold on it at the time. Um, we were look, really just purpose was to evaluate the problems and try to solve the problems. And we discovered that Twig could solve all the problems that we were having with with performance, with security, uh, with complicated syntax of you know PHP being very noisy and verbose in its uh, PHP template syntax. Um, so that's how we arrived at at and the fact that it was part of Symphony was another you know point in its favor. So that's how we ended up sort of picking Twig as a solution for, for the problems that we're seeing. Is there any route to Twig? Because it's under um, Mrs. License, right? So the, the actual current system is Twig, of Drupal and Drupal Tech, Drupal Tech, but it's actually GPL. So Twig is Mrs. License. So if we use it, then we start have, having to enter licenses on every single one of these GPL files as well. So what's, what's the license of uh, Twig? Uh, Missy. Permit, OK. Permit. Okay. Yeah, um, I, on, on the tri hash DrupalCon, like hashtag DrupalCon, I actually post a link from the Freedom of Software Foundation that actually goes through and talks about all the considerations you're going to have to take in when you're using two license systems together. So that's definitely something that, you know, whilst it's not code related, you know, something that you're going to all have to think about. So there may be some flexibility on that. Um, if we went to the Twig project and said, hey, we want to include this in Drupal, but uh, there has been a lot of progress lately about getting licenses changed yeah, to get stuff in. Yeah, and if you if we can get him to come to the core conversation tomorrow, that would be really good to bring it up then too. Yeah, so I can talk to you afterwards to like yeah. try to get some details of context. So. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for pointing that out because that's obviously a huge thing that we need to. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so this is, uh, uh, this is you know, looking at node.tpl.php. So one other thing I, uh, I would point out then is, um, you know, at one, as you know, we have uh, templates and we have theme functions. And at one point, we had this, I think, back in like Drupal 5 days, we thought, okay, you know, like we can make uh, chances, you know, we can try to structure the system such that uh, most themes can do what they need to do just by using templates. Uh, and, you know, functions are sort of more, you know, overriding theme functions is sort of more of an advanced feature that, you know, maybe themers can get to when they're ready for that, but, um, you know, that they don't, that potentially they could do a lot of interesting themes without that. Uh, I would uh, submit that that assumption has proven to be uh, false. Uh, I, I don't think I've seen any template, I mean, I don't think I've seen any theme that doesn't override a theme function. Uh, and there's actually some very, very common ones that we have as functions that uh, uh, that are very commonly needing, needed to be overridden. Uh, so as one example, I'll actually take uh, a look at links. So theme links is a particularly nasty function. Uh, it's about, uh, do you see, about 80 lines of code. Uh, it does a lot of stuff in there. Uh, you know, it's, first of all, the, the markup is totally buried. I mean, you know, like if, if the reason you want to override theme links is probably, you know, maybe because, you know, you want to change whether you're using a UL, LI, you know, markup or whether you want to output your links in some other way or, you know, you want to get your classes added in, uh, you know, that markup is buried within this function. It's hard to find even if you do sort of copy and, over and override it. Uh, additionally, there's, uh, you know, you're doing things like checking whether a variable is a string. Uh, you're ha in some places, you have to call Drupal attributes yourself. Uh, in some places, you have to call check plane yourself, even for like a, a basic variable. You know, not like you know digging into like a node object, but just to get like the text of the heading, you have to call check plane because we don't usually sanitize 
uh, before calling functions. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of room here to make mistakes. Uh, and, uh, and, then there's, and then there's, you know, logic in here as well. Like we have to determine whether we're, you know, whether our link is active uh, uh, because we want to add the active class to the LI. So we have all this logic to see, you know, are we on the current path? Or are we on the front page? And you know, like we check language. So you know, this is like PHP code. This this isn't really like easy to work with as you know from a uh, from a front end standpoint. Uh, and unfortunately, we actually, uh, if we were to make links into a template, it would uh, we would have a noticeable performance regression because we output links a lot on the page. And the nature of PHP template is, uh, you know, if you if you output a PHP template on the page, you know, a few times, that's fine. Um, but if you start doing it, you know, hundreds of time in a single page request, uh, each each one is uh, has a noticeable performance overhead. Uh, and so one of the benefits of Twig is because it gets compiled, and then it's a, and then in, once you use it once in the page request, it's a, it's a class that's in memory. You can then call functions on it uh, without this, you know, with much less performance overhead. So we think it's not yet proven, but it's an assumption. Um, we think we'll be able to convert many, maybe even all or very nearly all of our theme functions to Twig templates, and so we won't have that function template dichotomy, and we could have you know, a links template that looks something like this. <laughs> this, this is the first time I saw this slide, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes? So does this contain other logic that was previously in the functional, or do we remove move some of the logic somewhere else? So the logic would move into the equivalent of what we do in preprocess, as we, you know, when we have something as a temp, we, we can pre-process functions as of D7, but we, uh, whether we do or not is not, you know, like sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but with templates we always pre-process. Uh, one of the things we've been looking at with Twig is, uh, is to change the way we pre-process. Uh, you know, right now we sort of, uh, because all of our pre-processing steps are, are, you know, we're not working with objects, we're, we're kind of like imagining what all the variables that someone might want are, and so we pre-process and kind of prepare all the variables that someone might want to print out, and we and that's a lot of uh, execution time, and then you know the template may or may not print that variable. Uh, one of the things we're looking into doing with Twig is make it so uh, a little bit more like the token system, you know, where you can just sort of register for, per template, you can just sort of register the uh, the variables that ought to, the top level variables that ought to be available in a template, uh, and then when it's used. Then it it figures you know it it then effectively does the things we currently do in preprocess, but only at the point that we know that the template actually requested it to be there. Uh, but yes, uh, there is logic that would be happening you know at the point that any of these variables are being used. Um, uh, and so that's you know that's part of the point, right? Is to sort of separate like the determination, like for example, you know like this idea of link active, right? We want to separate the concern of 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 in the template knowing whether the link is active or not. Uh, versus the actual logic of, of how we determine that. So, so the big picture is that we want to take all of the logic that theme developers actually care about and make sure that that's available to you in the template file. And we want to take all of the other logic that Drupal actually cares about and remove it. So if you need to know the active state, we're going to give you a link.active, and you can access that and figure out if it's active. But you might not necessarily need to know everything else Drupal needs to know, like calling the attributes function yourself or sanitizing stuff. We're going to make that happen automatically. This means that every theme function will be turned into a template that needs to load in massive amounts of files. And so that means that orders for performance issue or for all the issues, all the servers should be applied with APC or navigation, etc. Well, it's loading a lot of files. It would be, especially on a server without APC, it's, it's loading files that are necessary for that request. I mean, even though there's maybe 200 or it, there's, you know, about, we currently have about 30 templates in Drupal core and roughly two. 180 or so theme functions. So if we imagine where we have 200 templates, uh, they don't all get used on every page request. So uh, I you know, we'd have to look into it, but uh, I think the number that would get used on, a, on each page request might be smaller. Um, and we're actually expecting that there might be a performance improvement because if you have a page that has 30 comments on it, you only have to load that once in Twig land, whereas in PHP template land, you would have to load it 30 times. So this is the kind of thing where if we can improve our template files so that we have fewer template files that are recycled, we can get a performance gain instead of getting a performance loss. Uh, you said these were cached. Is it only per request? So once, you know, so basically Twig t uh, templates get compiled to, uh, to PHP classes. So, you know, once you, 
within a request, when, when you first load the class, then that class is in memory. So that's, I mean, that's just sort of the way PHP, you know, there's actually no way to free it from memory. PHP just, you know, has all of its classes in, in memory. Uh, but if, you, if you're using APC, you know, then it's, it's cached just like any other, you know, PHP file gets cached in APC. And the, and the compilation step is going to happen um, kind of like in the theme registry build sort of thing where you, we're like, we're going to compile all the, the twig templates now and then it's just done until the next time you decide to do that, which is going to be much later. And we're also going to be comparing this to the giant page array that we have now in Drupal 7, which takes up a lot of memory anyway. So. Uh, you mentioned driven down with the dots. That's very neat. Um, but how do I know what is available to drill down? Are there tools available to either in Twig or will we make Twig up these things? That's a great question, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think maybe I, <laughs> so one of the problems with uh, the render elements is that they um, uh, I discovered this back in San Francisco um, DrupalCon San Francisco um, three years ago in that uh, was that three years ago? Yeah was that because of the rules that are available inside the sort of render API for creating these elements it meant that it was basically sort of wild west of how you actually go about creating a render element um, and that meant that it was completely undocumentable because it was completely inconsistent each render element. Um, so there was no, literally no way for, like, I love writing documentation, um, and there was no way for me to write documentation on all of the different parts of a render element. Now, um, with uh, the Twig syntax like this, we're going to be registering sort of variables, so it'll be very easy to go in and, like, these are the list of variables for this template from, and not only, like, like core does it right now by like hard coding a giant doc block at the top of the template file. We'll be able to like actually look at all the contrib modules that have registered variables for this template and you know, it'd be like the devel module for you know, twig templates. And it would show you these are the variables that are available. And, and when you register, there should be, I think there should be, when you register a variable, you should be able to like register like some, a link to documentation or something like that. You so know. a lot of this we don't know yet. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely possible but, for us to do that. But the, the discovery is a, is a huge part of what I want to have in it. So I, I, I would think that when you register a variable, you would also register some, some documentation or a link to some documentation or something like that, a resource for documentation. Well, if, if the, um, the, the things that are available to drill down are more predictable, <laughs> then there's less need to go debugging. Every, every um, thing he has has, has a class or a first attribute in that class, and, and it's always available. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, so yeah, I just want to kind of quickly sum up and then actually keep you know keep uh, keep this great Q and A discussion kind of going for as long as we have time. Um, but uh, just to sort of you know kind of bring us back to the high level of of the problems we're trying to solve is is essentially these kinds of inconsistencies that we think are causing themers difficulty. Uh, the the not knowing when to use an arrow versus, you know, dereference as an object or an array, you know, arrow or brackets, uh, not knowing whether to print a variable or print render it, uh, having to work with very different rules and syntaxes when you're in a template versus a function, uh, especially when you're in a function, having to know which variables are safe and which you need to check plain. Um, the one we actually solved, uh, you know, the one that went into head just a, a week ago, a week or so ago, which is uh, the, but prior to that, ID and class being sort of special and other attributes having different rules. Um, but one that now we have introduced with the attributes patch, which is now that attributes drill down and render drill down sort of have slightly different rules. And, um, you know, these are the kinds of inconsistencies that, that uh, we think are annoying. And so the, uh, the dream, if we manage to get you know, all the f kinks worked out with Twig uh, and, and all the assumptions that we have pan out uh, is that we'll be able to always drill down with dot, uh, that uh, whether you print a top level variable or you drill down into a variable, it works. Uh, it, you know, it render, if it's a render array, it renders it or, or whatever else, you know, versus if it's a string, that works too. Uh, and that it's safe, um, uh, that you don't need to check plain it. Um, you know, that the, the next line, this idea of suppression, you know, this is something that we have with uh, render. This idea that when we, you know, when we render uh, a child uh, variable, that the that then when we later render the parent variable, it 
the child variable got suppressed from it. Uh, I'm not sure what other systems, if any, uh, do something like that, but I actually think that's a really cool, you know, if it is a Drupalism, I think it's a very cool Drupalism, and so that is one thing that uh, I think it's an awesome thing that we can keep and, and maybe even uh, export to other projects if, if they think it's a cool approach. I think it's worked well in Drupal 7. Uh, and we're hoping that to, to remove theme functions and, and make all markup uh, live in templates. Right, also, so we want to remove uh, theme functions. We also want to remove per process functions. We want to remove process functions. And we want to remove render. We want to remove pre-render. So the idea is that as tools, themers have a, a more limited set that's equally as powerful. So we don't need to wonder where to go to do something. It's just you can do it right there. So where, where would you, where would you do this today? So a lot of this we don't know yet. Um, but we were talking about it yesterday and we came up with this idea where if everything in Drupal becomes template first, so anytime you call a theme function, what happens is Drupal looks up the template file and then tries to insert variables into that template file. Um, that template file is defined in, in the hook theme of whatever provided it. And what's defined is here's your template file and here's the variables. So theme developers have access to a hook template registry alter. And so they can insert new variables at the very root level where here's the template, here are the variables available. You can change that. So if you can change the variables available at the highest level, then you don't need a pre-process because we aren't processing anything before the templates get rendered. We're just rendering your templates right away. So you can basically change what's in the registry as the variables that are available. And, and from, from a module developer standpoint, um, I, I think there's going to be, like, when you register a variable um, for, uh, for a template, you get to like when you're asked, okay, give me this variable now. Uh, you're given like the the twig object, so it's got all the data that you need to sort of go into it as an object level, and then create your variable based on the <clears throat> the data and the twig object. Um, is there is there additional? Because I want to get all the edge cases and make sure that we're not missing any. So. Uh, So if it happens, uh, because in, in Drupal 7, we gave the, the themes access to all the alter hooks. So those still happen after everything else. So if you're doing a registry alter in your theme, you should be able to change everything that's already there. Yeah, I, I think we do need to d think about that particular use case. Because um, actually, Emma Jane brought that up, the exact same question right before this. And I ha hadn't thought about that one. So um, we should try it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so one problem I always have is um, I try to keep things modular and make modules with specific features. Okay, not necessarily with the features modules, sometimes yes, but I make one module for group something and another module for a newsletter or something. And uh, the themers, they're going to just go and put everything in the theme and make a template for everything. And so all your modules are kind of modular and, and you can switch one off. Theme depends on everything, and everything is somewhere in the theme also. So then you have this big theme with a lot of unrelated templates, and you have some old templates that you don't know if you can remove them because they, you don't see if this belongs to the old version of the newsletter thing or the newer version of the newsletter thing that when it was implemented. And, and so yeah, your theme and the CSS is even worse because you have one big CSS file, which some of that is about the newsletter or something else. And, um, maybe there's even the guys who are working on the website before you. And That's an. Yes, uh, but not within Twig. <laughs> um, I could talk to you for about five minutes about this subject. Um, I'm not sure if everybody else here wants to know the answer to that. <laughs> so maybe we could talk about it afterward. Is there? I mean, there the, the, there are a couple different things you can do. There's a, the, a new D8 initiative that uh, not a new D8. There's a D8 initiative that is talking about doing uh, layouts building layouts within core, which removes a lot of the hard parts of theming anyway. So that makes uh, theming a bit simpler and then it doesn't have to worry about creating all the CSS for layouts and stuff like that. So then there's a possibility of making themes more modular just based on the fact that they're, they're, they're getting the layouts from here. Uh, and then if you talk about um, uh, SMACs, uh, uh, Scalable Modular Architecture for CSS, that 
uh, if, smack smacss.com. It's a website by Jonathan Snook. It's a great uh, resource for trying to make your CSS modular exactly like you want. So that's an actual development technique that you just go whack your, your, your themers and make sure that they're following that. Um, <laughs> So, so Smack is a relatively new concept, um, so it, and it's gaining popularity, and I'm trying to promote it as well. So I would, you know, run it by them because it's a really good concept. So, uh, what are the uh, special tweaks? Is it kind of intelligent? It knows uh, what, what you said before. If we discover this is an array, I'm gonna just print it out. If we discover this is an object, then I don't need to worry about uh, what, what format exists. It just print it out. And It would. So the twig, this twig dot syntax would help me because I'm always accidentally like I'm going through the develop process the same way you are, and like I'm creating it, and I always miss the one thing in the long chain that is an object, and then I suddenly have like a fatal PHP error, right? <laughs> I do that all the time, and I you know help make the D7 theme system, so. I love the dot syntax because it completely gets rid of that problem for me. And it should be, and, and ideally it should be possible to just try it and it should, should work somewhere in the chain and that's what you're working to. That's kind of what we want. We want this to be intuitive. We don't want you have to think about whether it's an object or an array. We just want you to go, okay, I want this item from this thing and yeah. be able to print it out. Because I think that's like a lot of themes think. They get into it that fast that I want that thing. I just want it. Yeah. And I want to think about how to make it secure and Right. So, so that's, I think, the, the biggest win, too, is that we haven't heard the theme developer community clamor a lot about security because they don't really care. But the developer community really wants to, like, impose security things on themers. And so I think that we, if we can make it completely invisible to the themers, so all you guys really need to worry about is the markup because that's what you're good at. And we shouldn't need to bother you with calling the obscure functions that we made up. Um, just let you use the dot syntax and have Twig take care of the security, and then you can do what you're good at, and we can do what we're good at, and we'll all get along much better. So, so you were saying that Mark Martin is um, doing some of the best of fast data implementing the code. Um, one of the, the, you know, when you're working with other people's models, which is a good example, and um, you're doing fun of stuff, the, um, you're generally able to find the inheritance too. Right? I'm inheriting crappy HTML, I'm inheriting a crappy, you know, it's, I'm inheriting all this So you're always going to get contributed module developers giving you HTML that's not very good. That's something that's really hard to avoid. But one of the things that we do want to do is clean up the templates that come from core so that they're more reusable. And in core, we want to make the core modules use the good example templates. So you'll have a wrapper template rather than having eight things that are wrappers. Um, and if we can create a pattern like that that works well in core, there's a chance that contrib developers might use them. Right. One of the things, one of the things that we, we we're hoping we'll be able to provide for contrib modules is that we have like 180 different theme hooks in D7 right now, um, but they're very, very, very specific use cases, and we would like to have a lot to generalize a lot of those so that they are reusable. Because right now there's a lot of theme hooks that are not reusable, and if we had a bunch of reusable um, theme hooks, then contrib doesn't even have to write its own. Uh, it, its own templates. It could just say, oh, uh, I need that one and that one and that one, and I'm going to put it together and just reuse core's ones that are provided. So there's a potential that they they just have to learn how to combine them the right way rather than come up with something that they don't know what the hell they're doing. 
And if you don't like those, you can still override them in exactly the way that we're doing now. So you'll be able to override them with whatever naming convention, maybe, I don't know if that's gonna change or not, but uh, you, will, you will be able to change it. Yeah, theme hook suggestions are definitely not going away because I love them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, red shirt. <laughs> okay. I'll allow this one away. Anything in Twig you're planning on not using? For instance, will we be able to uh, include uh, just random HTML files, stuff like that? Uh, so we don't know yet. Um, there's a couple of things that we think Twig does really well, and we haven't figured out how to make that work with Drupal, like the Twig template inheritance stuff with its own thing called blocks. We already have something in Drupal called blocks. That might be kind of confusing. Um, we haven't figured out how to make it work right. Uh, include files seem to be reasonable. We tried playing with those a little bit in one of the first sprints, and it looked fine. Um, so we haven't ruled anything out yet, but we also don't really know what we're doing yet. So uh, maybe ask us tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we're, we're including the, the Twig library, so I, I don't believe we're, we're excluding any Anything. syntax. We just may or may not Use be it. using all of the bits that it, Twig provides in, yeah. in core. Mm -hmm. One more thing. We were talking about during the WYSIWYG buff earlier today <clears throat> regarding text formats. Uh, would we be able to, uh, would we be able to uh, throw like Twig into the mix there to use uh, Twig syntax to call things while you're um, uh, editing a, a, a node? Um, so I, one of the things that, that I heard, at, I think it was in the same buff, or maybe it was later in the day, Like, like today, a re replacement was, for token idea. The, uh, right, and, and somebody said that uh, they thought that you could use something like what contemplate module does, but in a sane way, because of the changes that are having to architecturally to Drupal 8, um, which I, I've been thinking so poorly of Contemplate module for so long, it's hard for me to grasp that that might actually be really useful and secure and, and so, not like, oh my God, a horrible performance. But there's a possibility that yes, you could use Twig template with inside your, like, your node body. Um, well, I haven't thought about, and I probably won't explore that option at all, but I guess the answer is, yeah, probably, and you can make it happen too if you want it. <laughs> so there's two, two different things going on. Like one of them is there's this really horrible module that no one here should ever use called Contemplate that let you edit PHP templates in your browser. Uh, PHP is like dangerous and that's not a good idea, but if we were using Twig, that would be not dangerous and actually a really good idea. So we have the ability to let people edit their template files directly from their browser, which I think could be huge in terms of getting people into creating stuff in Drupal more easily. Um, but uh, uh, there's also something else where Twig has this uh, thing called Twig.js that lets you like replace things in the DOM using Twig templates that are the same as the Twig templates you're using in HTML. I'm not really sure exactly how it works, but I think it's awesome and that would be great. I don't know how that would work with WYSIWYG, but it seems like there's definitely a potential there for stuff happening. So. Yes, because they were saying that uh, as a part of the Spark project, they would want to, or maybe it already does that. They do implement, um, I mean, you're able to insert inline tokens, like a huge list. Yeah, I mean, I think the token thing and the twig thing, there's a lot of similarities, but they also probably need to remain different things. Like we're not gonna replace one with the other, um, but there's definitely ways they can work together. Like our drill down syntax was like based on what we liked about how you can drill down with things in tokens and how tokens are always secure and how, like there's a lot of stuff that is that's similar, um, but I, I don't know yet. Yeah, so last means. comment there. Uh, so uh, would you be able to call things like, um, like the, the curly brackets uh, and then uh, views dot machine name to have a view inside of a node? Or, or in a template file? Uh, you could uh, use an alter hook to provide a variable that would render a view and then stick that in a template file. I don't see why not. Um, I don't think we're gonna do it. I think, I think you're asking whether you can do that in, within WYSIWYG though, right? Is that, was that the question? Or within uh, I kind of changed my mind. I, even more important uh, in a template file, like a yeah. twig file. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible in a, in a twig file. We, we don't know. Maybe. Thank you. Sounds cool. 
Uh, one, just uh, before we move on with more questions, I, I also want to just point out that uh, you know this is uh, the the way this you know the way I think we really started thinking about Twig was was sort of identifying the things that that uh, were problematic with Drupal seven theming and and trying to just sort of solve that kind of uh, syntax. Um, and once we realized that Twig would be cool, then all of these interesting possibilities started opening up. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we're like three months from feature freeze. So, and we're, you know, we're still pretty, you know, there's a lot left to actually do to make this real. So one of the things we're hoping for is, is one, to get a lot more feedback, uh, like on, especially online on GDO and on, in the issue queue and, and, and any other, you know, forums. Uh, because, you know, to know, like, again, is this, you know, is this a good By the direction? way, DrupalCon is one of the forums, so yeah. if you want to just come up to me and talk to me, that works too? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, because one of the things that happened was like with, you know, we thought render arrays were a great idea when we were developing Drupal 7, right? Well, John didn't, but a I lot. Didn't know, I didn't know anything about it until <laughs> after it happened, so it's been a little while. <laughs> and then, you know, and then we released Drupal 7 and a lot of people started complaining about render arrays. So we'd rather, you know, get, get kind of get more feedback, broader feedback, you know, about things like this uh, uh, earlier. So that's one way you can help, and then other ways uh, you can help us, you know, obviously if you want to come to the core conversation, the, the sprint, uh, this is on the slide, uh, participate in the issue queues, uh, and it's not just about, you know, if you want to help code, that's awesome, <laughs> uh, but if you want to just help give, uh, give the kind of feedback you've already been giving for the last half hour, that's, you know, please uh, do that. Um, we, we need it. So. Or, or if you have, like, advanced features in Twig that you're excited about, uh, you know, like, uh, bring them up and, and, if, and if, you know, find ways to make them happen. So. Or if you have problems with Drupal 7 that we haven't heard of yet. Right then. I'm not sure if this is a question for you guys or for the blocks and layers, layouts initiative, but how is that going to impact on the theme system? As someone who fears and loads the panels module, <laughs> I am concerned that I will be dealing with bad, um, bad and unchangeable markup, bad and unchangeable CSS. So okay, how for is all that going to apply? For starters, you way. should yeah. not fear the panels module. You should love and not no loathe it. Oh, I'll, but, be, I'll, uh, be, I'll be more accurate. I loathe and fear the markup it generates. Okay, okay. And the CSS it generates. That so we can work on. <laughs> so just how, how does all so, that play together with the new themes, this new proposed so, theme system? So for starters, um, the, the things that we're thinking, working on theming right now don't include pages and layouts. Um, those are all going to be handled by these new panels like plug-in things that we don't know yet, really. But so what we're... Yeah, go get him. No, no. I, I've been talking to him enough, so I know the answer to the question. Okay, so so what we're talking about are things that are blocks and things that are smaller than blocks. So we're talking about all of the theme functions, like theme link and theme image, and getting those into Twig. So um, the the plan is that for the blocks in, in, layouts initiative is that there's going to be a layout generator that allow you to create layouts. Um, the Spark has been demoing some actual code that does it, and they were quite clear in that yes, we got this demo. It, it, it works, um, the, the, what did they say? The, uh, the UI is slick and the CSS, the HTML is crap. But, <laughs> and I told them right up front, I said, I love the UI, I want to use this, I, I think this is awesome, um, but you will not get buy-in unless the markup and the CSS is really clean and, and, and the, they have an API for like, once you've laid out the stuff, then go generate the CSS and generate the HTML for that. And I said, I will help you make sure that that's clean. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wanted to be clean too because it's it's not really that hard as long as you have somebody who knows what they're doing and 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 cares about that it's clean, right? And you'll be able to override everything. Yeah, th that, that probably boils down to it. In terms of overriding, we'll still be able to override it using Twig templates. Yeah, right. yeah, it's all, it's all going to be Twig. If we do this in Twig, there won't be any PHP template okay. anywhere. It'll all be Twig. So there's there's this configuration management initiative too, which does it yeah. right now. It exports its configurations into YAML files. So when you you create a layout, it will be creating and put and putting content in it. It will be creating a a the 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 very sketchy plan that we laid out last night while we were drinking beers oh. is that there will be a YAML yeah, fun, yeah. <laughs> there will be a YAML file and a, a uh, and like a twig file potentially if our part get the, the other twig part gets done a twig file that is the the layout of of that the actual sort of markup right so you'll sort of export not yeah so have you it'll have be creating you... that for you um, and you can override it because it's just a twig template. 
right, in the normal ways, okay. right? Oh, and you could also potentially just like screw the layout generator. I'm going to disable it and provide my own. Right. Have you written like your those. own panels layouts yet? Yes. So you know how there's like a config file that you're like, this is all the crap yeah. that's yeah. available, and then you can actually write your own HTML and CSS, and those things are separate. So it's going to be the same thing, only it'll be YAML instead of weird panels and info files, and it'll be okay. Twig instead of HTML. I look forward template. to it. Glad that y'all answered that because my answer to it would have been way more confusing and way less helpful. <laughs> maybe I just drank too much when we were talking about it last night. But uh, and maybe this is not the best uh, time for this question. But I was just curious specifically about um, uh, the compilation of the Twig class. Um, it sounds like what we're saying is so okay. We explicitly say there's some variable that's going to be made available, but we're not really doing pre-processing. It's like lazy processing or something like that. When it's actually called, yeah. the way that Twig compiles this class is that's when we do whatever processing has been assigned for the creation of this variable. Right. So it's an on-demand type situation, similar right. to whatever two-string things we do right now in, in D7. And that's just going to be what happens for all variables? Yeah. Uh, yes, with, with, with the caveat that you know, before you call the template, you, you're getting sort of the, the base data that you need, right? So uh, like you're still calling object. node load. And, yeah. and providing that, and then and then all the other variables, right, become generated from the data that you've passed it. I would, it's not I would really have a variable. But. Talk for a little while longer to understand the line between base data and all the other variables. And well, you, but I mean, like it's very mushy right now because like on. node load becomes the node variable, right? Right. So that's what I'm talking about. Base. It also for, depends on the template base data file. is the node variable right now. Whether it continues to be, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So cool. like if you're if you're on a link file, your base data is like the link stuff, but if you wanted to insert like more attributes or whatever, you could do that based on your link data. But it'll be really different if it's a node or a user sure. or something else. Yeah, and, and like an example of the kind of thing we you know, where to draw that line is maybe blurry and, and you know, maybe we'll draw it on the on the very far end of the spectrum and say that we don't even load the node and just make a node variable available but not actually load it until it's uh, output in the template, or yep. maybe, you know, maybe we'll draw the line less aggressively than that. But for example, the other end of the spectrum, the kind of thing we definitely don't want to have is like right now in Drupal, uh, all of the comments are loaded, uh, you know, in like template preprocess node, or actually even before that, like as part of node view, all of the comments are attached to the render array, even if node.tpl.php doesn't print it. Right, yep. so if you have a node template right. where you're like, I'm not yep. going to print the comments, but all those comments got loaded. And, yeah, you know, that, that's, and that's the thing I'm keying on, and, and I'm just I'm I'm really curious about how uh, I'm just I I have, I have like an engineer's curiosity about how we go from about how Twig goes from this 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 template file to something that has managed to encapsulate the available variables and lazy attach all the information. So I'm curious about how that looks, and I'm sure I'll have a look at it at some point too. But cool, thanks. Uh, so um, I guess we keep this magic naming thing that that something looks for a template of that name, and if this exists, then it's overridden. Right now, we're planning on keeping the same template yeah. override so, structure. So one problem I always have is like if I want to, um, so if I have a menu at the top, it's horizontal, and another one is on the side, that, and they should have a different markup. Then what people recommend on Drupal Org on some stupid threads is that you make this uh, theme menu link, and then you switch, make an if statement if it's this menu or that menu, and somewhere it's even difficult to find out which menu that would be. And I don't do it like that. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just find, find this out. But, um, so, but still, but it's for people recommend that you override theme manually. And at this point, you cannot know which menu that actually is. So it would be more smarter that there's another logic to switch between different implementations, different templates. At the moment that you start rendering the menu, and it would be for the entire menu and not just for one specific item. And also this. Um, that now I have this theme on, and so this uh, theme function should all uh, theme hook should always be rendered like this. This seems to be too limited. That sometimes you want that. In this case, you should use this template. In other case, you should this use this other template, because not every menu is the same, and the same could be for other things. So, so what I would say there is that uh, there's a thing called theme hook suggestions. Have you used uh, that in D7? Yes, yes, but uh, also. Mm, so, so you you there are. Um, I, I think that might be a limitation of Drupal 7's menu system that it doesn't provide enough useful theme hook suggestions out of the box because uh, if you look at the menu block module, which is a contrib module, it actually provides a lot more theme hook yeah, suggestions but, but actually, just um, with you. So like there, it actually does provide a theme hook suggestion for when you're doing a menu link. It's like the 
menu link uh, dash dash and then the menu name. So you can actually do it per menu really easily because it's already a available theme hook suggestion for you. You can do that in core too, but you have to like do the pre-processing and add in into the theme hook suggestions variable array. You have to add those in manually then. But theme hook suggestions would be the way that I would say you should should tackle that problem. And then that will continue to be available in D8. Yeah, I think I thought about that and, and somehow didn't like for, I would rather have something that switches at the point where you start running the menu and then just go a diff, completely different path and not each time look at the um, which template it should call. But, uh, but, but you're not, um, it's just a naming convention of the TPL that you're doing at that time. So like you're creating a separate template file that has a naming convention. So it's named a specific way that has the separate rendering. So you're not, they're completely separate and you're not thinking about both at the same time anymore. You're not doing if statements. It's just like the system is doing, is determining, oh, I'm in this menu and you want me to do it this way every single time. So it just does it that way every single time because it's a specific menu. So. Oh, yeah. Quick what's, what's the time? Just five, minutes. five more minutes? Okay, great. Um, I have a question. Um, so I hate the render API as much as everyone, but uh, I thought the theory was, the idea behind it the, was good and that uh, all, all these contributed things produce markup and, and we want to, instead of just overriding it with separate template files, we can have data and we can use that data, uh, we being the themers, the themers can take that data and make a very custom mark, uh, markup. Um, but it's terrible because there's no data model. There's absolutely no data model. So instead we just have this monster array that gets built up and the memory footprint is ridiculous and trying to get to what you want. Um, even I've been working with it for two years and I still have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I completely um, agree with you. So is, is Gabler in here? Good. Okay. So <laughs> the, there's, a, there's a, a PHP constant called like language undefined or something like that. I have no idea what that does. I, Okay, I, I, whenever I encountered it, I just used it every single time. I, I think there's a multilingual way that I'm supposed to be doing it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> so I understand uh, this idea of uh, Twig and the simplified markup and putting some of the logic into the template files, but I don't really see how it solves the problem of, um, or keeps what we had with, render, uh, with the render API but uh, cleans it up and provides some s real structure. So if I, this lazy loading thing is exactly what we need, but I don't see how we get from the template file to lazy loading, for example, like a particular comment or, you know, we have a lot of wrappers. So we have like the wrapper template and then inside it'll call individual items and these silos kill me. And the only thing that sometimes I have to get to break down these silos is the render API. It's the only time I'll touch it, but I touch it a lot. So, so the idea is that you'll get a template file and you'll get some variable like content. And if you want to print out like a field, you could do like content dot image field. And if you want like the first value, you could go content image field one. And if you want just the source tag, you could go content image field one source. Um, and hopefully we'll, it, everything will be like, there will be a top level item that you can access like content. And maybe there will be some kind of like viewer where you can say like, show me what's in content and it'll be It'll show you like these are all of the first level items and then you can say show me what's in content field and it'll show you what's in those. Um, and then when you go to print it, it'll print the markup version of it. So rather than seeing the data, which you got from your viewer, you can get like it's an actual image tag or it's just the value of the source attribute of the image tag. And the idea is that every module that needs to add its stuff in there will still add it in whatever way it wants, but it'll need to define it to the template system in a way that makes sense to you. So it's not arbitrary where they shove it in. So if so I have a module and I define a block and it returns something, what does it return? Or right now you would return an array or a, you know. Right, so that's another thing. Like right now you can either return a renderable or a string of markup. We're hoping to get right. rid of that renderable in thing. In core and in Right, sure. and it'll always be a string of markup. Right, so actually okay. a lot of what you uh, asked about is in the blocks and layouts initiative because the thing that it, it returns is totally, they're going to redo that because the way that it's done now is just totally janky. Like there's a title and a subject and maybe that's a render array. But so that will become much more consistent because we're going to redo that API for returning the block, right? And another part actually, this silo problem that you're talking about where like, oh, 
I actually want to put this field like way the hell over there and separate from the rest of the node. So it's actually outside the template file that you're normally doing. Uh, that problem also becomes much easier to solve with the blocks and layouts initiative because you can suddenly, you can basically just say, um, I want a block over here that has the field from this node, right? And so it's not necessarily a problem that we have to solve in Twig okay. because it's a problem that's solved at the block layout space, right? So the, 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 the crazy things that we're able to do with Render API, we don't have to do because it becomes okay. a UI issue. You're not of a situation where you're just operating inside of dollar content. You have much more like full holistic control over everything in all of your regions and, and can like drop things in or pull things out. This, the silo problem goes away. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so just a quick remark to John, uh, you're referring to the multilingual thing that you should be using and you're not using it. I think that's field get item, what you mean. Sorry, what? Field get item. That should be. No, 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 it's not it's not it. no, 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 because this, this is something in the, in the like seven layer it's deep array stack where you have to stick in language undefined to get to the, the field value because it's, it's, it because field values are segmented based on the language that they were stored with. And if no explicit language setting was made, then it means that they're stored in like the zero slot or whatever language undefined actually corresponds to. Which does mean that that code would not be portable to a multilingual site. I don't right. Know. Yeah. So I'm writing all this code that I know is not portable but to multilingual, but I don't know what the right code so is to use. Is that where you're supposed to grab it from? Language that is your own to get the right value out of the, the field? Or yeah. something like that? I'm, I'm, I do think I remember that works. So there's a different, just on the Jen is saying there's a different value inside the render array that I need to grab yeah. and then stick into that spot. Higher up, oh. higher up there's like a language <laughs> oh, value you can pull out. So you there's, there's, like a seven, there's like a seven stack deep piece of array and then you put like three stacks deep exactly. another array inside yes. of it in order to you got that, it. Sounds, that sounds yeah. so Drupal. Yeah. Right yeah. I think a lot of that has already been improved in Drupal 8 as part of the multilingual initiative and, and I know that Gabor would like to uh, improve the rest so and, and would like help doing so. so. I, I firmly lay the blame in render API and not in multiple thing. Well, just for the record. <laughs> okay, so we still need your feedback on everything. So come to all the stuff that we talked about. Come to the session tomorrow if you want to figure out how we're actually going to do this. Because like there were a lot of questions. We said I don't know. Uh, we're going to figure it out tomorrow. So come help us with that too. Thank you. Thank you. Those peaches were really good. I'm glad you wouldn't grab them before I came in here. <laughs> oh. No, they're fuzzy. Oh, well, they're really good. Do you like to have one handy somewhere around here? Not, but I will by tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Just, I'm really interested in how that actually gets wrapped up and, and what. So, what sort of method is stuck on the uh, digital class? What are you calling?